And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time Glory of the Garden. It's a forensics challenge, and the description is, this garden contains more than it seems. And the hint is, what is a hex editor? And this is going to be a very easy one, but I encourage you to stick around until the end, because I think we're going to learn some very interesting things. So we see we have this picture of a garden here. First, let's talk about what this file is. So the file is an image, an image has a set format. And so I looked up what the set format was. It's a JPEG and a JPEG you can think of as just a set of bytes. And so let's take a look at those bytes and those bytes are defined in some way. So for example, um, there's a start of image, there's a start of frame that's in the the start is defined by this byte sequence. The start of the frame is defined by this byte sequence. And then it tells you how to read it so that you can make something that becomes ultimately a picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm bringing up this 010 editor. And we are going to look at the raw bytes. And first things first, at the beginning of every file, there's something called magic bytes. And I'm curious what the magic bytes are for JPEG. The magic bytes tell you what a file is. Think of it like a, a cover for a computer. What is this bunch of bytes? How should I deal with it? Is it a zip file? Is it a GIF? Or is it a JPEG? And so here we can see there are several different magic bytes for JPEG, but they all tend to be FF, D8, and then some other stuff. So we can see this defines itself as being a JPEG to start with. So let's search through and let's see if we get lucky and if we can find Pico CTF in here. And we can't uh, because we're looking for the hex bytes. So let's instead, meaning we're, we're searching this column here, let's instead, let's search this column, the text interpretation. So we switch it to text, and then we search Pico. And at the very bottom, we can see here is a flag, Pico CTF, more than meets the eye, I suppose. So let's grab that and let's submit it. And then I'll show you some other ways that you can find this. And we'll talk about uh, file formats and other interesting stuff. I promise it'll actually be interesting. Perfect, and that worked. I'm interested in how you can hide things in a JPEG. So let's take a look at the file format and let's see, there's this comment. So my initial thought was, well, we've defined a comment and then after the comment comes the, uh, the Pico CTF flag. But when I looked for the comment uh, byte string, FFFE, so we're gonna change this. And we'll do a search on FFFE. We can see there are no comment um, elements in this JPEG. So what do we have? We have FFD9. So we have none at the end of the image, FFD9. So it seems like we can put just about anything at the end of an image. So that's, that's one place where we could hide things. So for example, if I wanted to write an additional secret message. Uh, the secret word is Alibaba, whatever. I could then save it and I think the image would still display. We wouldn't have broken the image. But there are other areas where we could not make that change and have everything be okay. So as an example, a Huffman table, that's a way of doing compression and encoding. So I think if we were to edit this, I think we'd have real problems. So let's look for FFC4. And let's just make a few minor changes to start. Let's just pretend that was a secret message because I'm lazy. I just want to press Fs. And we can see we've already broken this because this is a very important data structure in here that defines um, basically the way that you represent a JPEG. And I, I'm not 
an expert on this by any means, is as a series of cosines. And you compress it quite a bit from the raw uh, pixel values that you see here. Because if you were to represent every pixel in an image, it, it would be huge. So instead, you do this compression technique. So we can't edit that, but maybe we can shift it. Maybe if we wanted to put something in the middle, maybe we could grab this and shift it. So let's make some space. I'm going to just delete this. This is a really handy tool, by the way. Uh, I like this. I'm going to show you some other simpler tools for hex editing in a minute. But uh, first, we'll do this. So the, I'll write a new section. So I, what I think I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing out the space right before the section, the definition of a Huffman table and whatever else comes. And now I've carved out some space in this file, and I'm going to write my secret message. Uh, Pico CTF, you should try to learn and not just find the flags. Okay, and now I'll put the content that existed before, and I believe this will be a valid image. And it is. So we've just learned a way that you could hide your own images or your own uh, text or messages or really anything. And it doesn't just have to be at the very end after uh, the file has been told, hey, I'm no longer a JPEG. This is the end of the JPEG here. You could put it in arbitrary places. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's look at other ways you could have found this. You could have run strings across this image. And the way that strings works is, again, we said that this was just a series of bytes. And those bytes, they can be represented as ASCII, meaning English American text. And so a tool like strings, it just runs through the entire file. And it says, is there any sequence of bytes where four or more of these bytes I can represent as ASCII? So for example, uh, I should have left open 001 editor. Let me bring that back up and walk you through a quick example. So if we look at the hex column, actually first let me show you Pico CTF is indeed at the bottom of this. But we have found it. There you go. So strings. Uh, oh, that's that's my little note that I put in here. Here's the one that came originally. So strings did in fact find it. And now the question is, how did it find it? And the answer is strings runs through the entire file and it compares the values to an ASCII table. So for example, it would look and it would say, I have hex D7, but we can see Hex D7 is not an ASCII character, so it would move on. Hex C4, it looks, that's not one. Let me skip to one that is. Uh, zero, zero. Zero, zero is null, which is not a printable ASCII character, so it doesn't give anything. And uh, I want to also clue you in on a little cheat here. This right column, this is also doing an ASCII view of things. And so let's cheat quickly and let's find something kind of meaningful and then let's examine it. Examine the way that strings did things. Uh, I'm looking for a long string of legitimate English characters. All right, PP0K doesn't mean a whole lot, but that's what we're going to examine. So we can see here there is hex 70, which does work out to P. Then there's another hex 70, which is P. Then there's 30, which is, uh, nope, reading the wrong column, sorry, zero. And then finally, K. So what strings is doing is whenever it finds four or more printable characters, it's going to return that result and if you have a, a program like this, it's going to give you a nice layout that tells you where this started and then what the printable string was, and you can search over it.
Since this was so easy, I've decided to go into Kali as well and show you how you would do this from Linux if you only had a command line and you didn't have a really nice uh, tool. So here we have our garden picture. I'm going to open up a terminal and I will run strings on our garden. And we can see the flag pops out. If the flag was somewhere in the middle and it was not so obvious, we could run a grep. So we will pipe to grep and search case insensitive. And we would find the flag. And if we were interested in examining the raw hex, what we could do is we could use hex dump on gardens. We can see that spits out a ton, but we don't have that nice column that we had in Windows where it displays the ASCII interpretation. So we'll look at the manual for hex dump. And as we read through, we can see that minus C displays the input offset in hexadecimal followed by two column approach. Uh, so that looks like what we want. So we will do hex dump minus capital C. And then we've got our ASCII, but I want to be able to search over this. So let's dump this to garden.hex, dumping it to a file. And now if we use the less editor, we can examine this file. And again, we can search for something like Pico, and that wasn't found. Why wasn't it found? Ah, here's why, because this display seems to have a dot in between each of the values. So let's let's try p.i.ce. And again, the pattern wasn't found. Maybe I need to escape this. And I, I genuinely don't know. Oh, well that is that is annoying. Here's what's happening. There's a, a line break in the display on the bottom, unfortunately, and that's that's causing it not to match. So PI is as much as we have here, and then CTF. Uh, so that is a little bit annoying, and that's why something like 010 editor might be a little bit nicer for this purpose. But as you can see, we can do anything that we'd like um, with just a little extra work. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, please like, subscribe, comment, do all those YouTube algorithm things. Thanks. Bye.